Now, uh, here we assume that uh, theoretically the walls are expected to open at dead centers, but this particular walls are operated by camps. So when uh, this particular walls are operated by camps, some inertia due to the inertia of the camps, it is impossible for the walls to open instantaneously at dead centers. So moreover, we have terms like mechanical factors coming into picture due to the uh, shape of the camp and the dynamic factor coming into the picture due to the inertia of the moving gases either in or out of the cylinder and due to this particular factors walls are uh, impossible to open at dead centers and therefore they need to open uh, after or before the dead center but uh, theoretically we assume that the wall is opening at dead centers and uh, here we have what we call as a wall timing diagram. So what is a wall timing diagram? A wall timing diagram is the graphical representation of the opening and closing of the engine walls during the crankshaft rotation or the engine cycle. So here in this polar diagram we have represented, represented the opening and closing of different walls. So IVO corresponds to inlet wall opening. IVCU corresponds to inlet wall closing, EVO corresponds to exhaust wall opening and EVC corresponds to exhaust wall closing. So uh, initially we assume that the piston is, is at TDC and uh, the valve is open, inlet wall is open. So the suction starts. So the suction is happening from here and as the piston moves towards BDC, we assume that the inlet valve is closing, uh, closing at bottom dead center. So your suction ends over here and theoretically the compression starts over here. Now both the walls are closed condition. So the compression starts and at uh, as the piston moves from BDC to TDC and it reaches the TDC, uh, uh, theoretically we assume that the spark is happening when the piston is at TDC. So at TDC the uh, combustion happens instantaneously and the expansion process starts. So here this point, uh, this line now corresponds to expansion when the piston is moving from TDC to BDC and it goes on till the piston reaches bottom dead center. And at the bottom dead center, we assume that exhaust wall is open and since the exhaust wall is open, the exhaust process starts and your exhaust process is continued till the piston reaches top Z center where the exhaust wall is assumed to be closed. So here the first cycle ends and the second cycle starts that is inlet wall opens. So after this particular exhaust wall closes, we assume that uh, at the same instant inlet wall closes and the next again cycle starts and this is repeated again and again. So this is your theoretical wall timing diagram. But in actual, as we discussed earlier, it is not uh, uh, possible to instantaneously open the wall at dead center. And as we have earlier discussed, due to the mechanical factor and the dynamic factor, uh, the walls are never opened or closed at dead center. Rather, they are opened before dead center and closed after dead center. So you can see over here that in this case, uh, instead of opening the wall at dead center, we have opened the wall here which corresponds to some 20 degree before TDC. So we have opened the wall over here. So the cycle starts over here before TDC. So now your suction starts here because the inlet wall has opened. So the suction starts from here and it goes on. So it reaches TDC and then moves towards BDC down towards uh, BDC and the suction continues but here still you can see at dead center we have not closed the wall but it is closed around 35 degrees after uh, bottom dead center. That means your suction uh, is happening from this point to this point that is this it is 90 plus this 20 and this 35 that is 90 plus 55. So these many degrees the suction is happening. Now 
uh, here the inlet wall closed so now the charge is getting entrapped and therefore the combustion starts sorry the compression starts so now the uh, compression is happening and you can see uh, uh, theoretically it was supposed to spark was supposed to ignite at TDC but you can see the uh, the spark is given at a advanced timing that is earlier so the spark is now given around 35 degree before TDC and therefore the combustion starts here so the compression is happening from here to here and here now the combustion starts but still the piston is moving towards TDC it reaches TDC and then changes its direction but still uh, now the expansion stroke actually starts because the piston has starts moving down so in the expansion process the energy is received from the combustion gases burning gases by the piston and due to this particular energy the piston is being pushed down towards bottom dead center now as it is moving towards bottom dead center and we want wall to be remain open that is exhaust wall to remain completely open at dead center and for that what we have done is we have opened the exhaust wall 35 degrees before the bottom dead center so uh, till uh, till this particular point it was expansion but here since the exhaust wall has opened the exhaust stroke starts here so from here the exhaust starts now the piston reaches BDC it changes its direction and starts moving towards TDC and it goes on and you can see the 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 exhaust wall is closed 10 degrees after TDC so your exhaust stroke was from here to here which is uh, this 35 and this 10 that is 45 degrees in addition to this 90 degree so theoretically it was 90 degree and additionally we have now 45 degree uh, for your exhaust stroke now this completes the one cycle but already the second cycle has already started before TDC 20 degree before TDC which that is the inlet wall has already opened before uh, the piston reaches TDC uh, before uh, that is 20 degrees before the piston reaches TDC that means uh, this 20 degree and this 10, 10 degree we can uh, see that both the inlet wall and the exhaust walls both are remaining open because this is closing over here and this has been opened at this particular location so in this particular 30 degree both the walls are remaining open and this is what we call as the wall overlap and what is happening due to this wall overlap is that since both the wall inlet wall and exhaust wall are simultaneously remaining open the charge coming from the inlet manifold there is a possibility that this particular charge is moving out through the exhaust wall. So, theoretically, um, actually speaking, uh, this is the point where the engineers has to take care, where they have to ensure that this particular wall overlap period has to be minimum, so that the losses are kept minimum. So, uh, this is what we call as the actual wall timing diagram, which is different from that of uh, the theoretical cycle now what about this angles so this particular angles whatever has been shown in this particular diagram they corresponding corresponds to a, 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 a low speed SI engine and as we move uh, increases the speed of the engine we know that the time available for opening and closing the wall is uh, lesser and lesser because the engine is becoming faster and faster and the cycle is being completed in lesser amount of time so what happens is we have to increase this particular angles uh, the value of the angles that means inlet wall has to close more earlier and exhaust wall has to uh, sorry it has to open more earlier and close late similarly the exhaust wall has to close earlier open earlier and close late so the value of this particular angles will increase when the speed of the engine increases so uh, that is uh, how the wall timing diagram of a low speed and high speed engine differs so that is all for today uh, about 
the discussion about the four-stroke SI engineer.